All right, here we go. Give yep. me some, tell me where to go on futures. Let's start AFC. I okay. hinted at this earlier. Tell me, I'm going to phrase it a different way. And just instead of just who do you like, tell yep. me why I'm not on Tennessee. We talked about this early in the week on game within the game. It was plus 500 earlier this week on Monday. As we record midweek down to plus 450 on Tennessee, they're going to be the one seed. Is that the play for AFC futures? Is that the best value? Number plus realistic chance. How do I play AFC futures? So right now, what I would do in the book is like, well, see, the problem is like it's different in the NFC. We know who the one seed is. So I think if you like Tennessee, you should probably play them now to win the AFC because if they get the one seed, which they should, but until we know, the price is going to come down. There's going to be an adjustment. They're not going to be better than Kansas City. And, I mean, truthfully, I was texting some guys yesterday, some other odds makers and stuff. We were having a debate on what the line would be in the first playoff game. If all the seeds hold, it's Buffalo, the four seed, going to Tennessee. Is Buffalo going to be favored in Tennessee? I don't think so, but there's people that told me it would be pick or Buffalo minus one. And I was like, they're going to the one seed and they're going to be favored? Like, come on, it can't be. So it was a good debate, but the number's going to come down. As soon as Tennessee closes out Houston, probably by three or by seven, they're not covering the 10. Don't worry about it. Um, They're going to, the the number's going to come down. But like, I'm looking right now uh, at a book and it's got Kansas City's plus 210, Buffalo's plus 350, Tennessee's plus 450. Okay. Um, I think it's one of those three teams I do to win the AFC. Now they're going to have to play each other. The first game, they can't, that, that combination can't be Tennessee. All three obviously can't get there because there's only two teams in the game. That's silly to even say, but who you think is going to win the Tennessee Buffalo game. I think that's who you pick, Right to beat Kansas City, or it's Kansas City. Kansas City can go on a road and win a game, I think. Don't you? I mean, Kansas City can go on a road and win anywhere. They just they didn't go to Cincinnati and win. But I think those are the three teams. Are you looking like Burroughs, great and everything? Is, is that a team you would consider at this point? Because those no, odds are good. I mean, but no, I, I, think, I, it's, I think it's 10. I think the play, I, I think my play would be, if you're giving me plus 450 or if you could have got 500 earlier this week, for a team that, that could end up as the number one seed, yeah, give me that. Because yeah. and I think you phrased this to me earlier when we talked. Because basically they're just they just win one game. If they beat that Buffalo, now they're playing Kansas City. All right, now I got an opportunity to go back in on Kansas City for that game, and I'm covered either way. Correct. Yes. Right. So the, so to me at plus four fifty, that that would be the most logical play. I think. At this point, you have to pick at least one or both teams that you think are going to be in the AFC championship and the prices get adjusted as soon as the games end Sunday. In fact, like what we used to do, we would take all the futures off the board, all the AFC, NFC futures, and all of the Super Bowl futures off the board. As soon as the games kick Sunday, because anything can happen. If Carson Wentz gets hurt in Indy, sorry, newbie, I didn't mean to just single him out, but that was the first name that came to my head. I know. You know, newbie's got a soft spot for Carson Wentz. But if he gets hurt, that affects the futures for everybody, not just the indie futures, okay? So you take all the futures off, and then Monday, it's an all readjustment. So, like, I would always work Sunday, but I was always off Monday. But I had to submit my numbers for the guy opening the book Monday because you reopened everything. And then now is when you really start taking the bets, and some books are great like that have Super Bowl matchups. You can just pick the matchup. You can pick what they call the Super Bowl exacta, which is not only the matchup, but the winner. And there's all kinds of odds on that. So I think your goal right now is to get the best price you can on the team you think is going to play in the game. Is that Tennessee for you? I I think it is. Of all of those three choices, give me Tennessee with the receivers coming back, with Henry coming back, Foreman now to spell Henry. If he's not 100%, Foreman is look good. And you're the one seed, so you're at home. Those are a lot of things in your favor at plus 450, I think. Buffalo's road could be they have to play the Patriots for a third time. 
at home. Then they have to go to Tennessee. Then they have to go to Kansas City. That don't sound like somebody I want at only plus 350. There, that's a good way to AFC. say it. Yeah, I mean, I just that, that that's I don't I mean, I'd rather just bet them to win the game and roll it. You know, I'm going to get a better price. It ain't enough. It, not with that road. Kansas City's going to get what the Chargers or the Raiders. Um, and then they got to, you know, host Cincinnati. If Cincinnati wins as the three C, okay, they're going to get them in a rematch. Don't you think they're going to win? I mean, and then they got to go on the road, or if Tennessee gets upset, they get to host the game. It's only 210, 220, maybe two to one in places. I like that road better than I like Buffalo's road. The dark now, horses is the Patriots. No, can't they put it together? Oh, no, Cincinnati, no. nine to one. You know, they, they can't do it. It's a little too young, you think? The defense is just not, I'm not sold on the Cincinnati defense. B. How are you? No, I, I mean, my, again, my, my biggest intrigue is you're giving me a one seed at, at nearly five to one with all their guys coming back. I mean, they've shown. I mean, that's yeah. a totally Henry different. Henry could team. come back. Yeah, uh, they're talking this. I, he's yeah. they're saying he's practicing today, Wednesday. So you get that guy back. You're getting Jones and Brown. We've seen the difference Brown makes when he's back in that lineup. And the, and the the ones. I mean, I don't know how I can't play the forfeit. That might not be the right play, but I don't know how that's not the right play today as we sit here trying to get a little value. To your point, when they become the one seed, if they do that, four fifty five to one. That's gone, right? I'm not Newbie. getting that again. If Derrick Henry comes back, does that have an impact on like you looking at this and going, oh, I should I, bet them? I think B. Howe already laid it out. And think about what they did this season without Derrick Henry. So I, I, I think obviously it's going to move the needle to get me more interested in backing them. I wish I hit them when they were a little bit more dead in the season. But as we're talking about it now, I think if you're talking from a sheer value standpoint at who legit could be there and you're not just throwing darts, you know, trying to get this crazy plus money on one of these teams, you know, right. at, at almost five to one for the Tennessee Titans, the way that they're playing the chip they have on their shoulder. I think that's probably the best value and, and, and likely return you're going to get on that investment. Right. And Dave, as, as you say, if I'm trying to set up a play, I'm not necessarily, I'm, I'd love it if they go ahead and win it and you pay me out on the, on the 450. but I'm also just trying to get into the AFC title game yep. and then hedge myself at that point. That's really what I'm looking at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of these books have this cash out option where they offer you uh, money you know, whether it wins or loses ahead of time, I don't recommend doing that, but if it puts you in a good position, you know, and you want to take it without laying out the hedge bet, that's fine too. Um, I love doing that. So I, I think you're thinking right. B. how does, does the Henry thing, does that push you more to the window? Like, does that make you want to go, okay, I'm going to make this play. Cause like a lot of oh, people's yeah. hesitation in making future plays is tying up the money. You're only tying up the money for a couple of weeks. This is yeah. different than betting the Super Bowl in September. You're betting the AFC Championship in January. It's 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 just a little bit of a it's like getting a putting it on layaway for a couple of weeks. This is not a big deal. Yeah, totally go with that. Yes, Henry coming back in is a, is a factor because I look at this team that's getting its pieces back together for a late run while having home field advantage. I mean, that's a lot of things and I you're and you're the big. third best odds on the board. I mean, I I don't know how you could go anywhere else in this situation. Again, they might not get all the way there, but all of those things lining up at, at plus 450, I think that's a play. I really do. Dave, last thing that I'm wondering too, sorry to jump in, is you're talking about how the Titans with their path, they're likely going to be a dog in one or maybe two of these games. So would a way to look at it too, rather than tying your money up, you take a money line or you take them spread. And then if you win that, you roll it over, you do the old, whatever they, the mechanical yeah. parlay or whatever yeah. they're talking about. Is that a way to attack it too? If you like Tennessee and you don't have to tie up your money that way. It is, but the danger is, is if there's an upset and then, yeah. you know, now you you, you have to lay and lay like, uh, you know, if yeah. Buffalo loses to New England, then Tennessee will be favored against New England. I think Tennessee will be favored no matter what in the first game. I don't care who wins. I think Tennessee's favored, but again, this is where you get into the debate in the room and what do you put the line as, and what are you taking the bets on? I keep telling people I've been talking about it for two days. I've talked at a debate yesterday with somebody back and forth in a text. And I'm like, I don't see what you're seeing where Buffalo is going to be favored. If Henry is back coming back, people are going to bet Tennessee. I'm going to make them favored. 
And they're like, nah, they're going to bet Buffalo because Buffalo is going to win and blah, 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 blah. And this does happen. Public people and everything, they fall in love with the game before with the team with the bye. There used to be two teams with a bye, and they always didn't get all the bets at the beginning, and then they always usually won. The higher seeds win. All this talk about Cinderella, and very rare is the bottom seed go all the way and, and you know win three games in a row. It has happened. Steelers have done it. The Giants have done it. People, teams have done it. But I I think the Tennessee will be favored. So it's not a bad bet. I don't I don't think it's a I don't think it's a bad bet at all. I, I just think that um them having home field is a bigger deal than people are making it. I think that's a I think they're live. Yeah, okay. I'm on it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, click on another video right here on the screen. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.